The potential to build out next generation mobile networks in a more open and multi vendor way has been discussed for several years as open RAN options have emerged and been developed by a growing ecosystem. But have these developments and the interest from the operator community translated into actual deployments? Well, I'm talking today with Stefano Cantarelli, CMO at Mavenir, which is involved in many open RAN projects and rollouts across the world, to find out more. So, Stefano, thanks for joining us again. Good to see you. Um, so, what are you seeing in terms of the actual adoption of open RAN technologies and architectures? Has this really been embraced by the network operator community? Hello, Ray. Thank you very much for having me. Um, as far as uh, your question, I think there is no doubt that uh, Open RAN has become really the architecture for the future of uh, radio access network. Uh, but as you know, everything which is uh, become uh, uh, the, the architecture will take some time to deploy. But uh, what we can really look at and very clearly see is that uh, in the last four years, a lot of myth has been, uh, uh, you know, proven uh, into open run. Uh, things that people were saying that were actually not going to work and so on. And one by one, all the bricks has been put one on top of the other. So uh, from the very early days when we uh, remember there was the first uh, uh, virtualized run network, which was a uh, Rakuten in uh, in Japan. Now we got finally also the proof that a massive rollout can happen with Open RAN. And the proof uh, is actually DISH in the United States, where Mavenir is the main provider at the moment for Open RAN for the radio access network. Um, and, and that definitely uh, tells uh, uh, you know that uh, Open RAN is there, is alive, is kicking is working and is the alternative. And as I said many times, it will become the reference architecture for radio, radio access uh, network. It's, uh, you know, it, it's interesting, like uh, this rollout is uh, moving very quickly and uh, we are now talking about uh, thousands of sites in the next uh, uh, three days, uh, sorry, three, <laughs> three months. And uh, what is very important to know is that uh, all the architecture with virtualization that will lead to automation is also helping in this task of increasing the capabilities in, uh, in uh, rolling out and, for example, being able to activate uh, in, the, in the range of 100, 120 sites a day, which in the past uh, wasn't really possible in a traditional legacy system. And the last thing that is very important to note is just uh, radio access, uh, which is open run in this case, is only one component that contributes to the rise of the most important 5G networks and specifically a proper, and when I say proper, I mean standalone 5G network, which is uh, a, a real 5G G network designed to actually provide 5G specific services rather than just being an extension of an, exist an existing 4G network, which is most of what everybody has really uh, partially deployed nowadays. So uh, standalone network becomes really the key focus for all the cloud native automation, elasticity, and so on. So Stefano, you mentioned standalone networks there. I mean, how important are these standalone networks in the 5G era? Uh, and are we seeing many real world SA deployments right now? Uh, Ray, I think this is the key point, uh, uh, also starting with the, converse, the, the question that you had before. The main, the main point is that operators nowadays have started mainly to extend their 4G infrastructure by adding 5G frequencies on top of them. And this is what is a, a very simple explanation on what is a non-standalone 5G network. But uh, the 5G network is now starting to appear now, especially, of course, for the new players, but also the traditional operator are starting to look at the SA as the reference for the 5G, where actually those services for 5G are really implemented with that characteristic of latency, elasticity, end-to-end -end slicing, those kind of things are really 
uh, may, uh, characterize the 5G network. Needless to say that uh, a lot has happened in the, in the world, specifically in the private network space, where a lot of people have started to look at that. And uh, in the private network, I would include as well people like uh, um, neutral host provider and so on, for which in Mavenir today, we actually have a lot of example, uh, not just in the US, but also in Europe, like uh, UK, Germany, and also some specific example in, uh, in Asia Pacific. So the, the standalone networks are now started to take up significantly in the private network, neutral host in space, and the operator, of course, you know, the, 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 the new operator, the one is called Greenfield, but uh, which they have the possibility to choose what is the best option for them. And then also, uh, you know, for the, uh, the, the more traditional operator who are starting to realize and uh, understand that actually the real differentiation is in the, uh, is in the um, SA space. It's about elasticity, it's about cloud native, it's about provisioning in a different way than what they have been using um, uh, in the past beyond what is the traditional view of a virtualized environment, which is cost effective and, and so on. But really the ultimate goal for virtualization is the automation which really creates a lot of opportunity for developing new application and of course uh, for decreasing the overall operational cost. Yeah, so a, a lot of moving parts and many things happening in tandem as 5G evolves and uh, cloud native uh, becomes a greater part of operator strategies. Uh, and Mavenir is involved in, in a lot of different uh, uh, areas and parts of the network. It's 2022. Uh, what's next for Mavenir? What can we expect from, from the company in the coming years? Yeah, thank you, Ray. Uh, I think uh, the company had uh, an incredible growth in the last four or five years, where it really has been established as a um, I would say, I would say, as a, at a level of the tier one players, especially for the width of the portfolio, which uh, we have been able to achieve as Mavenir due to the focus on software and the ability to actually be extremely agile in that space. What what really we are looking for um, beyond uh, you know the expansions of our portfolio uh, in deployment uh, for the packet core for the for the radio, and let's not forget IMS. And I will start from there because. Um, for example, the containerization is actually the real technologies for virtualization that is taking really place because uh, it gives more benefits uh, um, versus the, the more um, uh, initial uh, virtualization uh, in terms of virtual machines. And, uh, and that one is now propagating across not only the radio, where it's more efficient for footprint and so on, but also in the core and more uh, in the IMS space, uh, where it becomes for uh, voice over new radios becoming uh, cloud native, containerized, you know, um, uh, right now. Um, and, and this is the, the most important, uh, Mavenir has been uh, looked at for a lot of this innovation in this space, including for small cells, open run and containers. So, you know, that, that, that's really a, a major themes that goes across uh, all the activities of Mavene uh, from 22 onwards. Uh, but there are also some other interesting areas, and I would like to mention two. The first one is, of course, uh, the uh, Radiant uh, Intelligent Controller, the RIC with analytics, because uh, that is one of the big things that Open Run brings in terms of not just being able to control a specific supplier, but to be able to do uh, no real time and near real time capabilities of controlling your radio infrastructure across different suppliers. So that's a very important one. It has been uh, said at different levels within all different, uh, you know, uh, uh, people in the industry. And, and that's really a direction that we are taking very strong because it's a, a very important uh, uh, differentiation with the automation concept in general. The other one that I would like to highlight for Mavenir is that we have noticed a lot of operators are asking more and more to restart almost from scratch all their, um, all their provisioning, rating, charging, 
kind of BSS, what in the old days was called BSS capabilities or mobile digital enablement, as we call it, how we call it today, um, because if they rely on those infrastructure that they deploy for the 2G, 3G, 4G mobile network, it takes a long time to actually adapt and modify in order to include us where the 5G network and people don't really have the time to, to, to spend on those and don't have the same money that it was in the past. So they want something quicker, faster, but as effective as, in order to be able to launch those 5G services as fast as possible. And Mavenir is playing a big role in that space and already fueling, empowering a lot of uh, uh, project in this space, uh, some of which, uh, you know, um, you know will, will come to, the, uh, to public knowledge very soon. But uh, we see a lot of potential in the space because it's really looking at the overall transfer Information end to end to a 5G network, which is really the main focus of Mavenir with our Trust the Future view, which is really transforming into a 5G world. Yes, there, there really isn't any part of the uh, telecom operator infrastructure and systems that isn't being impacted uh, by the shift towards more cloud oriented 5G networks, that's for sure. And of course, the BSS is so important because at the end of the day you have to rate you have to charge uh, and that's how you you get the money for the services that you put out there so a very important development absolutely well stefano it's been great to talk to you today about uh, mavenir's view of the market uh, how open ran is developing and what's coming down the line next and look forward to talking to you again in the future thanks very much for joining us thank you ray thank you very much